Hello, welcome to Infinity, and uh, this is the beginning of a set of videos on the curves. Curves are, is one of the main controls that are the adjustments that are used in um, all kinds of photo editors um, from Photoshop onwards, and, and Infinity does it well. Um, let's start looking at it before we start talking too much. In the, when you come to the develop module, so if you're using a raw file, uh, which I'd always recommend, you've got the basic controls here, um, lens controls, details of, of noise reduction and sharpening, and this one called tones. And in tones here, you've got curves. You can, you also got black and white and split toning, but all we want today is curves just showing you that these are here and you can use them in this. I actually often use curves more in the photo module, in the photo persona, because uh, it's more, um, it's non-destructive, which means that you can go back and change it. So let's go on to that, but just to know that the curves are here in the develop persona. So when you click on develop, then the uh, this takes its time, but there we go, it comes into the uh, persona here, the photo persona, in which we can find the curves here. Curves are found, if you go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and in here there's a curves adjustment. Notice also it's got control M there, which is very handy because if you use it a lot, and some people pretty much swear by it, it's one of the few controls that they, they use. Um, you can always get a new curves layer by hitting Control M. You can also go down here, this circle here, it says adjustments, click on that, and curves is there as well. So let's have a look at it. What is done here, let's open this up, it adds this extra layer here. So when I uh, work on the curves, I can actually delete it or move it around the place. So let's, um, let's take a look at this. Excuse me, I'll just move this out of the way. There we go. Bring up the controls for this. So what have we got here? What we've got here is, this here is the histogram. And notice that it's exactly the same as the histogram up here. It's the, the white bit there, the same shape. And what this says here is this goes from darks to lights, so black at this end, white at the other end, and upwards for the histogram is how much. So there's a peak here, which is sort of the low to mid tones, which is probably all this lot here. And then there's a big peak here up to the bright stuff, which is going to be largely the sky, and then varying amounts down here. So different pictures will show different histograms. Normally it's nice to have a good spread across. This is just for information, the histogram. You don't actually use it as part of the curve. The main thing is this line here. Okay. And it's based on this graph. So left to right for the line, not the histogram, is, but it, it is the same. It is from, from black to white. But it's left to right is black to white in terms of inputs. Now, those where you began. So it you could think of it as it is now along here. And... Up and down, it's also from uh, black to white, but it's also will be. So that if I go to one of these things, there's dots at either end, these are called nodes, and I can click on those and move them around the place. So if I click on this, for example, and move this up here, that means things which were black, you know, was down here, then change that to, up here, go halfway between black and white. So in other words, if I move this up and down here, you can see that, that is making it, the overall thing, lighter and darker. So that's a, that's a thing you can do if you want to do, just make the whole thing lighter and darker. But what this does as well is, and this is a key thing about curves, it smoothly continues things from one end to the other. So at that end, whites stay white, but in the middle here, something which was a middle between black and white and other, a sort of a grey, is now 
going to be more white. It's halfway again towards white, so it's lightening this. So we get the same sort of thing. They're gradually, you know, it's being lightened from one end to the other because that's being pulled up. I can also go this way and see that way it's darkening it. Yeah, where the this says uh, because I'm at the bottom here with things that were black. Right, going across here, everything from here that was black, mid-tones, so even up to here, halfway across, all those are going to be made black, because on the vertical scale, black is at the bottom. And I can bring these up around here and move this around here. So, for example, if I put it there at the 25 cent point, then I'm saying... Everything here along this line staying as it was, which is the red line, but everything below 25% is going to be a bit lighter. Yeah. So if we're going above the line, we're making things lighter. If we're going below the red line, we're making things darker. Same thing goes for the other end. I can click on this and drag this down. Now I'm playing with the whites. So I can pull this down here and it gets, the whites get darker as I pull this down. If I pull across here, more and more things are going to go white. The lighter they are, the sooner they are to go white. So they get right down here and only the dark things are visible at all. Everything else is burned out. So that gives us quite a lot of control. For example, if you see along the bottom here, there are no colours here really to speak of, that are in this space. So I could pull this across here. And as I pull that across, things darken up a bit, but I haven't really lost anything. So that's one thing that you can do is, even this is called setting the black point. Similarly, you could play with this and pull this down if this didn't go right to the very end. And it's called setting the white point, which you can do with the levels control. Another thing you can do with this is you can click on any point in the curve here and you can move this around. So you can make the curve change. And by doing this, and you can do multiple of these, so I can put this one up here, Make this is making things lighter, but it's going smoothly lighter. So as I pull this up, I'm not getting anything burning out and going to, you know, going solid white, but it's finding the highlights up here are getting brighter and the shadows down here, not quite as bright. In fact, I could grab the other end here and pull this down now I'm making the the highlights lighter and the darks darker. So in other words, I'm turning up contrast. And in fact, even a small change can make a huge difference in this. I can turn this on and off from here. So there to there. Notice the difference. Even just a small curve. And this is part of the important thing when using curves. Little differences, little changes make a big difference. So be careful with it. If you want to get rid of a point, right click on the point. So I'll right click on the point there and that gets it rid of it easily enough. Down here I can I've got grey, RGB, CMYK and lab. So RGB is a normal red, green and blue. But if I click on this, this these lets us change in different ways, different sets of ways of looking at the light. The master in all of them is the same, but down here I can change red, green, blue, and if, if things are transparent, this changes the transparency of things. So if I go to red, for example, now and if I pull this one up here, I'm increasing the reds. See, just the whole thing gets redder. Or if I play with this one down here, the darks, I'm pulling the dark ones up here, so things which are black are now going red. And if I pull this back down to the line, now the, the whites up here, so the sky, that's not going red, but the dark things are going red. So I'll right click on that. I can't right click on this one because it's the end one, so I can just pull it back. Oopsie daisy. Or I can just hit the reset up here and that puts things back to as they were. So if I change this, for example, to CMYK, now under here I've got cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and alpha as well. So now I can play with the cyans, and if I turn this up, you can see, look, watch the sky. There's often a lot of cyan in the sky. See the way it changes the sky? So it gives you a way of, of that kind of control. The picker here, 
If I click on that and then click anywhere in here, so in this bit here, it'll automatically then move it up and down. See it's put a point under the graph, so it will select the point under the graph where this is. So I can pick another point here, and you've got to create another one. So if you want to work on uh, brightnesses within here, notice it doesn't pick on colours unless you're it's within a single colour here, but overall it's looking at the lightness even of colours when you're that you're doing. Um, let's reset that for now and so let's go back to RGB. Uh, if you change with these by the way it'll completely forget what you did on any other scales. This one here this goes between 0 and 1 and this is how much you affect it. 0 is black and 1 is light, it is white. So if I say you know, a minimum of 0, uh, maximum of point, say point 0.2, that's 20%. Now if I'm applying this, everything I'm doing here is only going to apply to those areas effectively down here because it's going to be between 0 and 20% in other words, between black and 20% grey. So if I turn this up and down, if you look at the dark areas of the graph, you know, like in here, for example, then this changes not too much. So, uh, so that means you can constrain how much of the blacks and the whites are affected by this. Down here, this is the normal thing, this is the opacity, uh, which is affected like a volume control of how much this works. If I turn this right up, then opacity will change how much of that is being used. 100% fully use it. Zero, it's like there's no effect at all. So let's reset that. The blend mode is, it. what effectively you're doing with the blend, if you put a blend mode on this, is it imagine this is a duplicate layer and it's had the curves applied to it and then it's blended back. So this gives us a way of saving file space because we're only putting a curves adjustment on here, which is kind of an algorithm as opposed to all the dots of an extra layer. So for example, I could turn this up here and then go up to a blend mode here and I could change the, the blend modes here. So it's taking a layer with a curve adjustment and blending it into the original unchanged layer. So you can make adjustments here. And then you see if that's a bit much that so you could change the opacity and so on. So you can use the blend mode to save space and uh, do kind of two things at once. That's curves, very briefly. Uh, I will be talking about more in, in the other videos. So I hope you think that was helpful and thank you very much for watching.